But we will enjoy Bridget while we still have her. Yeah. I'm gonna miss this little kitty. There will be kitties okay. in the future. Look, she's stretching. <laughs> she sleeps with her paws all curled up under her face. It's the cutest thing ever. There will be more kitties in the future. Trust that there will be kitties. Yeah. There will be another kitty. Someday. Yeah, cut these bangs. I'm looking at myself on the camera and I'm like, Cousin It. You and your bangs, man. Huh? You're always on about your bangs. Like, you know, you're, you're at war with your freaking hair. I pretty much live at war with my hair, yeah. That's my everyday. We don't all have long, majestic locks like you. Some of us have to fucking fight for it. What locks? They have strands. So it's Kiss a Ginger Day. Kiss a Speaking Ginger of my Day? Hand. What is Kiss a Ginger Day? Huh? What is Kiss a Ginger Day? Well, what does it sound like? Yeah, but who established this? When was this ratified? Is it a national holiday? The Are the ginger banks closed? World Council. Duh. The Ginger World Council. Yeah. We're a super secret organization of gingers, and we make the fucking rules. Now, do all gingers want to be kissed today, though? Well, I mean, you have to ask permission. Otherwise, we'll do really bad things to you. So, like, you have to go up so, to, like, you know, a ginger and be like, okay, I haven't filled my quota for kissing a ginger today. May I kiss you? No. Can you sign this card saying you refuse to kiss me? So that the others won't beat me up. Right. I, think just, I think Kiss a Ginger Day was actually created in retaliation for Kick a Ginger Day because fuck South Park. Yeah, was, I'm, I'm with you there, fuck South Park. I was with South Park until then. And then I was like, you know what, you fucking guys? Like, that movie was surprisingly good. Like, the musical quality, yeah. kind of fallingly good. And then Kick a Ginger Day happened, and I was like... I kind of stayed with it too long. I stayed with the point where they did the Jersey Shore parody, and they had... They recruited Al-Qaeda to fly passenger jets and crash into people from New Jersey. And I was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm... I heard they did a thing with Kanye West, and I heard they did a thing with Lord, but I haven't really followed in a long time. Yeah. They're kind of dicks now. Speaking of dicks. Oh. But they actually had, you know, they gave George Clooney a Lifetime Achievement Award on the Golden Globe Sunday night. And while they didn't include the facts of life in his career montage, they did include his stint in the South Park movie. As the, but not his stint as Stan's gay dog. Yeah, I know, right? Which was his original role on South Park. That, I was that disappointed was, in that. Yeah, I know. That, that, was, that was a high point of a Clooney career. Yeah. So, dicks. Well, kind of. We have metaphorical dicks this week. I think... Every, well, no, well, okay, we have one... I'm getting ahead of myself. Head. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm clever. Um, we gotta do the jingle. Yeah, we have to do the jingle. Let me get the intro going. Where are you, intro? Well, maybe if you prepared better, Nash, you'd have it ready already. Shut the fuck up. What do we say? Say it with me, channel. Live, everybody! Yeah. Here we go. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And this week, I think it should be just some people shouldn't have kids, is where we're starting from this week. Um, prepare to be saddened and kind of pissed is is where, yeah, that that's where we're, we're starting off. So, remember a while back where, I hate, I hate having to say remember a while back, because I have to acknowledge, this shit keeps happening in different forms and different ways, but it just, remember a while back when a guy got arrested for taking kids out on a joyride on the, the hood of his car? No. 
You don't remember that one? Did we do that? We did that one. For fun. I remember the nanny that had the stroller in the back of the pickup truck. This was different. Well, we, we've got uh, another one this week. Only this wasn't so much of a joyride. And this comes to us, of course. Oh, Florida. Um, We need to unearth that song Derek wrote. Here you go. Tiny low. Winter Springs, Florida. Woman charged with driving. Oh, this is just a bad headline. Woman charged with driving with son on car hood. If you have to use the word with twice in the same sentence like that. You got to manage your prepositions better, man. You need to work on your sentence structure. Yeah, I know. Your syntax is killing me. Central Florida woman is facing a child cruelty charge after authorities say she drove down a busy road with her teenage son on the hood of her car. Winter Springs police say an officer pulled over 43-year-old Tuana Lowe uh, Monday, uh, th Thursday morning as she was traveling on State Road uh, 434. Lowe reportedly told officers that her son had jumped on her vehicle to prevent her from leaving and that she drove away in an attempt to scare him, assuming he would jump off. That's a thing that only happens in movies. Yeah, it's, it's, and when they jump off in the movies, they always land and they're fine and there's no problems. Right. Everybody's in the really real world. If you jump off the hood of a moving car, goodbye. That's it. You're, you're also done. In the real world, it's not funny when you drive off with somebody on the hood of your moving car. Yeah, computer wrote it. Baby on board means inside the vehicle. Yes, not literally on Amelia Bedelia. It, it, I love how she's kind of smiling in the chart. This, what's funny here, lady? This wasn't funny. Well, I mean, her kid probably won't do that again. <laughs> Are you really going with the cat on a hot stove method of parenting? This is, like you said, some people shouldn't be parents. I'm fucking one of them. Well, he learned not to, dry, to ride on the hood again, didn't he? And I mean fucking is a modifier, not a verb. It's... I am one of those people, is what I'm saying. I am, yeah, I'm one of those, yeah. Okay, I'm trying to put the fucking in a good place in that sentence. There's not a good place for it. Um, <laughs> no, just, for, you'd be like, well... Next time you won't do it, will you? You know, okay. <laughs> My dad had the worst, one of the worst things to say as a comeback to a child at, at all time, And it's one of those, those parent-isms that just makes you so fucking frustrated. It was this. Hurt to suit you? You know, if I, if I would run and bump into something, and I'm talking to a small child, six years old. If I banged into the table, and I'd be like, ah, he's a man. And he'd look and go, hurt to suit you? What's your response? What does that mean? Did it hurt to your light? Did it hurt to suit you? Wow, that's really Southern. Hurt to suit you? My dad's argument ender was always, don't get smart, stupid. What do you say to that? That's when you knew the argument was fucking over. He was done. And you were just like, okay. I, he, but like this, like, you know, reasons I shouldn't be a mom. Like today, I was in charge of my nephew because he had a snow day in school because mm -hmm. it rained. It's, you know, it was a total waste of a snow day, but whatever. Okay. So I was off work, so I was in charge of him for the day. And he's like walking on the arm of the couch and I'm letting him do this. <laughs> and then something kicks in my brain that. I shouldn't let him do this. And I said out loud, I was like, you know why you shouldn't do that? He's like, why? I said, because when I was your age, when I was nine, that's exactly how I broke my arm. And he just went, is that true? Because I lie a lot. <laughs> he verifies everything I say because I tell the kid a lot of bullshit. Another reason I shouldn't be a mom. And I'm like, yeah, that's actually totally true. I was playing Mary Lou Retton on the, on the arm of the couch oh, and I fell Mary and... Retton. Bam, and my arm still cracks here. 
And don't you know he got the fuck off the arm of that couch? <laughs> well, you see, that was kind of effective parenting. I, I guess. Well, but our... it took me like a full 30 seconds of him being up there for it to occur to me that like... that was a bad idea. Maybe he shouldn't be there. I should say something. Yeah, yeah I should probably get him down from there. Because I've been there. I've been that kid. Fucking painful, man. So our next one. Oh, excuse me. Long day. Long day for both of us. Um, I normally don't yawn in the air. I don't know if you guys can ever tell. It's sort of like when I yawn, so you guys yeah. can't tell. But anyway, at least this woman was there with the child or teenager, as it were. I guess at least she was supervising his death-defying feet, sure. Yeah, there, there, there is definitely something to be said for adult supervision. Especially when you're about to get busted. Wisconsin woman flees deputies, leaving children in minivan. Hello, I miss Wisconsin. I was accused of eluding police in her minivan, then abandoning the vehicle, leaving her two children inside... As she fled on foot. Well, I mean, they're only going to get juvenile offenses. <laughs> Rock County Sheriff's deputy tried to stop the driver because she has an active probation warrant. As the deputy got out of his squad uh, Saturday night, the 26-year-old woman drove away. The deputy pursued the minivan until it stopped less than a mile away, and the woman and a man bolted from the vehicle. Uh, deputies found the woman's two children, ages four and five, in the vehicle, with another man. Children well, okay, were... at least, I mean, there was a grown-up. <laughs> it's not like they were unattended. Children were turned over to their grandfather. Rock County Child Protective Services is investigating. Still, don't do that. <laughs> That's... I like how you pulled it back there. It's like, there's a grown-up there. Wait, no, you probably shouldn't do that. Just... Don't do that. Don't just leave your children. Let, let's... Shall we break this down? If you're in a car chase in a minivan... Stop. You're Probably in a minivan. going to lose. You're in a minivan. Stop. Maybe don't get in a car chase with your fucking toddlers. Yeah, there's the other one. If you have a four-year-old and a five-year-old, they're not going to think it's fun. It's it's not like, come on, kids, it's a ride. We got flashing blue lights, and we're going to go really fast. They're not going to be like Drax and Guardian of the Galaxy when they're crashing into the planet, and he's like, Yes! Yeah. No, they're not going to be like that. There's going to be poop involved. It's not going to be happy. Yeah, no. And you know, if you're trying to elude capture, probably best not to leave behind two people who can say, who could, you know, the lineup, that's mommy! Yeah, but you know... I have a relative. I won't say which one. I'm <laughs> going off on a lot of tangents tonight, and I'm sorry, but got in a car accident with my two nieces and bribed them to not tell anybody. It was a fucking <laughs> year before anybody found this out. They, how did they bribe them? I forget. Like, she was like, oh, I'll get you ice cream if you just never talk about this. Wow, kids were cheap. And Well, they were like three and four. <laughs> and... It was like a year, and she slipped up, and she's like, well, you remember, Holly, that time we got in the car accident, and we were like, what? What? What, 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 what car accident? And then it all came out, and we were like, girls, why didn't you tell anybody about this? Well, she bought us ice cream. <laughs> hey, man, they learned early. Stitches get stitches. This relative was a medical professional, so we're like, that's not fucking okay. <laughs> It's not okay. You, you you can't do that. Oh, in the channel, Genku. Kids, here's your first fashion lesson. Orange really is the new black. <sighs> Mommy got new bracelets. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Oh, they like my tangents. Well, good, because... But you know, we should be wrapping up by now. But I'm talking so fucking much, we're nowhere close. Oh, but you know, at least with with, with the kids, the parents were the problem, and you count on your authorities to deal with that sort of thing. 
Unless, perhaps, maybe the authorities are as fucked up as the parents. No sus from the AP. Arrest warrant issued for boy nine accused of stealing gum. Post Falls, Idaho. An Idaho prosecutor issued an arrest warrant for a nine year old boy who failed to show up in court. Uh, KHQ TV reports the boy. Because he was probably in school. <laughs> uh, Post Falls is accused of stealing a pack of gum. Police Chief Scott Hwang says it's the first time in his 30 years in law enforcement he's ever seen an arrest warrant for someone that young. Hwang says the child missed court because relatives had no way of getting him to the courthouse. He's in juvie for stealing gum? He's in juvie for stealing gum. He's nine. That seems unnecessarily harsh. How much is a pack of gum these days? 50 cents? Probably like a dollar. A buck? Oh, shit. That All right. Pack of gum is a buck. How much... The, the, the punishment for that is you get grabbed by your mother... By your... You get your ear grabbed by your mother and dragged back in. And you yeah, to give it back and apologize. And apologize and shit. How much does a court case cost? More. How much does a police, uh, the, the, the time to pay a cop to go and find your ass cost? More. Than a pack of gum. Than a pack, way more. This is not one of those, it's the principle of the things. He's nine it's a pack of gum! And, like, not like you should just let the kid take... Like, not like you should just let kids steal. I'm no. Not no. But there's ways to drive that lesson home that are not this. That You're are... putting a fucking nine-year-old in juvie. I know. Over a goddamn pack of juicy fruit. And And... And no kid would steal juicy fruit these days. I'm showing my age. Yeah. What do kids chew these days? Or Orbit? Orbits. No, kids don't. That's grown ups. Um, do they still have that? Hubba Bubba? There's like a trident one that's like layered flavors. I think my nephew likes that one. We're so old. We are. We don't even. We don't know. <laughs> what gum is popular in the that kids? Mike is going to come back in style. <sighs> so, I mean, just. An adult, a prosecutor, issued this warrant, and everybody involved, nobody stopped and said, are you fucking crazy? Yeah. Nobody in this entire chain of authority stopped and went, this is stupid. Yeah. Can I just pay you for the fucking gum? Here's a dollar. I'm going home. For fuck's sake. Well, let's turn away from kids for a bit because it's just getting Maybe depressing. the reasoning on this was the same reason that... Did we cover the Play-Doh dick toy? No, but that but was... But you know a, what I mean, right? Yeah. Yeah, Play-Doh put out a cake decorating kit. Cake decorating kit that was a big, oh, veiny it's, penis. It's a giant dick. <laughs> it was a giant, clear dean penis. That it used ejaculates Play-Doh onto your cake. So you could... Right. Hey, at least it was multicultural. So you could put any color Play-Doh you wanted in it to make any color dick. Parents were obviously really offended by this. Where was I going with that? Oh. <laughs> I feel like this was the same... This got through for the same reason that that got through. Because nobody wanted to be the guy in the room. Who said? Like, nobody in that Play-Doh meeting, in that series of meetings, wanted to be the guy that'd be like... You guys, you guys know that's a dick, right? You don't want to be the one that says that, and then everybody's like, "No, what's wrong with you?" But everybody's thinking it, so everybody was probably thinking, "This is stupid." But nobody wanted to be like, "Your Honor, guy, put me in jail. This is stupid." Speaking of stupid, um, marijuana is legal in some places in the United States. Arguably, we're still fighting over that right now. And they've made it a lower level crime in New York City. You don't go to jail for it anymore. Yeah, it's just like, it's a fine or something. Yeah. Well, it's still a crime in Florida. 
but they just caught up on the bestiality thing like last year yeah well smoking pot not okay fucking goats totally okay yeah florida man carrying pot plants along the road arrested 20 year old gainesville man was arrested saturday night after police spotted him on a street holding a cannabis plant in a red solo cup that is some redneck shit. that is amazing when keith leonard shepherd uh saw a police vehicle pull up he quickly placed the plastic cup he was holding on the ground next to his leg that's gonna work inside that is some redneck shit inside the cup was a greenest red cannabis plant with its roots intact uh shepherd told police the plant had just been given to him and he was simply smelling it. The police vehicle first approached. But it gets better. Police arrested. Because the cannabis plant is mostly known for its fragrance. Its fragrance, yeah. But no, it's actually a fragrance note. When I used to work at Sephora, we had a fragrance that was called Cannabis Santal. And all the teenagers would come in and be like, hee hee hee. And we're like, yeah, it's $80. Get the fuck out. Man, pot smells like plant farts. Let's be honest. Pot smells like f fucking plant farts. But you can, I guess, distill it into <clears throat> fragrantness. This gets better, though. As the officer interlocked his arm with Shepard's shoulder, Shepard slammed the officer up against the wall with his body. Police took him to the ground while Shepard continued to resist, attempting to bite the police officer's arm as it approached his head. You know, it's not like you were... I'm innocent. It was the one-armed man. You were busted. You were flat out, straight up busted. You go into jail. I feel like that wouldn't have happened had he made use of that little plant. Yeah, you know, you think he'd been a little more chill about it. Yeah. I I just it. <laughs> we have to turn around. Give everybody our butt. That's nice. It's one of those things. Guy walking down the street. The pot plant, the solo cup. There's a party somewhere that just just the sound of banjos just follow you around at that point. <laughs> just ambient banjos from on high. Ding 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 ding. Does your aura just turn into lumberjack plaid? <laughs> I want to. He. There is a party somewhere and a story behind this, and I want to know where that party was. It was like, you know, was it like a a, a gift you went home with? Was it your take home bag? You know, <laughs> that is a tacky ass party favor. Martha Stewart would not approve. Of that. <laughs> and that's a bad thing. It was Arlo's brother. Oh, Arlo Jr. Yeah. Oh, all right. So we've had a red fucking solo cup. A red solo cup. That is, that is, God damn. that is to, that is to America, to, to the American redneck, what the champagne glass is to France. That is just, you know, well, we've seen many people try to smuggle many things into America. Usually, Usually inside them. Yeah. This guy fortunately did not put them inside him. Oh, God, thank God he did not put these inside him. However, I I don't think... I don't know how he was sure he was going to get away with this. Chinese iPhone smuggler caught with 94 phones strapped to his body. Look at that. He is wearing an iPhone suit. He's like the hipster Iron Man. <laughs> Except instead of an arc reactor, he has a little glowing Apple logo. <laughs> Don't you want that comic book now? Hi, <laughs> man. Oh. There's a lot of snark in this one. Oh like... my god, Steve Jobs dies, but they do like a vision thing and create him an eye suit. And he, oh my god, we need to write this book. It'd be a fucking hit in Williamsburg. I am telling 
One Chinese man seemingly couldn't wait for an official Apple wearable and tried to smuggle an amazing 94 iPhones from Hong Kong, where they're cheaper, into mainland China by wearing them inside his clothes. We don't know the mix of models involved, but the total value of the iPhones would likely exceed $50,000, making his saran-wrapped iPhone suit one of the most expensive suits in the world. Black market iPhone 6 Plus prices had reached over $3,000 during the period where they were not officially available in China. Okay, if you're spending $3,000 for a phone, That phone better do some fucking tricks. And the iPhone 6 Plus, it's a nice phone, sure, but it's not a three it's not three thousand dollars. What are you doing? Did he did he not know that they have metal detectors at the airport? <laughs> metal detectors, hell, look at where he's got them all over himself. Like the last time I flew, I had to take off my belt. I had to take out my earrings. I had to like He's got I didn't them. realize that my boots had a metal bar inside the heel to stabilize the heel. Like, I was fucking half naked by the time I got through the metal detector. He's got an iPhone cod piece. How is he wa- You know they caught him just basically, it was like, it, it, it. They'll never suspect me! Let's face it, this is not the weirdest thing you've walked in on me doing. <laughs> I'm telling you, we need to do, like, hipster Steve Jobs, Apple, Iron Man. They'll probably sue us for all $5 that I'm worth. Yeah, but, but yeah. It's just, it that could not have been comfortable. And honestly, who here is going to be paying top dollar for crotch iPhone? Japan. But only if they were in the crotch of schoolgirls. Use panties in a can is a thing there. But this this thing, what? Wait, wait, wait. wait I mean, this thing. Okay. We're doing that in the actual Iron Man comic. Well, damn it. He's got. Oh, okay. D. A. Scott Jr. He's got ninety four iPhones and his dicks on one. <laughs> nice. But you know what? Who wants to? There are crotch. There are like nine or ten of those motherfuckers on his area. Who who wants? Well, it's not like they're directly. Like clearly, he has clothing under it. Still, there's sweat involved. Come on. And and look. Oh, he's got some strapped to his butt. How is he going to sit on the flight without breaking those? Um, folks, what's Mandarin for my iPhone smells like balls? Anybody know? <sighs> Finally tonight, we have this. Okay. I have no problem with sexting. I'm going to make that clear right now. I, we're not judging. With, God, you're, you're hooked. You're right in there. You're like, I, tell me more. Got no problem with sexting. What you and your partner or partners do, however you express your affection and entertainment and whatever for each other, cool. Down. If you want to send them, cool. But there is a caveat to this. And that is, if you are using your technology to send illicit stuff to a single specific person, learn your technology. Yeah. Learn how to work that motherfucker. Okay? And I don't mean the shaft. I mean the operating system. Because. I, well, this, this pretty much says it all. Um, and it makes me sad when I have to use Ars Technica for one of these stories. One coach's nightmare. Why are they bad? No, it's, it's a good site, but... I hate them having to report on this because this is kind of... One coach's nightmare, sending his wank video to female players. Look at that illustration. Oh, yeah. The guy who does... Uh, his name is Arch. Arch Lawson, the guy who does stuff for ours. Great shit. He does good work. Sometimes the it wrong... It kind of like your, your, your... What do you call the pants? The, the trousers cosmic? A little bit. Sometimes one wrong click really can change your life. Take the case of Jeffrey 
Saroy? Saroy. Jeffrey Saroy. At 3.30 p.m. on the afternoon of September 25th, 2014, the 57-year-old soccer coach and grocery store owner unbuttoned his blue jeans. Sitting on the brown suede love seat in his living room of his Lebanon, Connecticut home. You're really setting the scene for him. I know. Saroy held his smartphone at arm's length as he masturbated, recording a 10-second video clip of the act. Saroy sent the clip to his girlfriend using the ephemeral message service Snapchat, waited for confirmation that she opened the video on her own phone. But no confirmation came. After several moments of waiting, Sorry wondered if he had made a mistake. He checked his Snapchat history and realized the awful truth. Instead of them sending the message only to his girlfriend, Soroy sent it to all 30 people on his contact list, including at least six high school girls from the soccer team he coached at the nearby E.O. Smith High School. I have friends that went to that place. <laughs> <laughs> Soroy. Uh, quickly remove the video from Snapchat, given that it was live on Snapchat servers for just 15 seconds. So I hoped he avoided any of the life-altering consequences that might flow from such a mistake. He waited here from all his players. No one got in touch. 4 o'clock passed. 4.30. 5 o'clock. Perhaps he was in the clear. 5, 10 p.m. The phone rang. On the other end was uh, EO Smith's athletic director, Steve Robichaud. Do you need to tell me anything? He asked. Well, I don't know how to use Snapchat. Why are... You're a grown-ass man dealing with high school girls. Yep. Why are you Snapchatting them at all? See, that's... Snapchat is one very specific use. Kind of. And people do use it for other things, but... No, 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 no. They sh Snapchat is yeah, not... If you're a grown-ass man, you just don't have Snapchat comments kind contacts that are minors you just you don't 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 you leave them on your instagram and your face that's fine leave them on the instagram it's cool like that's 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 over a certain line this is why okay Ladies and gentlemen, if you are the kind of person... Why would a 57-year-old need to sext? Why wouldn't they? I know. 57, he's not dead. He still has a dick. Obviously, it still works. But he doesn't need to For 10 seconds, at like least. Um, no, I mean... Okay, ladies and gentlemen. If you are the type of person who has to call somebody if you need to hook up a monitor... You probably shouldn't be sexting. It's not even that. It's not even tech. It's not even that. It's don't fucking Snapchat minors when you're a grown-ass man. Especially if you're their teacher or coach or what the fuck ever. If you're in a position of authority, if you are a grown person, you have no reason to be using what is basically a sexting service. It is. At all. At all. Like, I still find it a little dodgy if you're like Facebook friends with them. And I have friends that are teachers that do have Facebook friends that are the students. It's a tough line to walk. A lot of them keep separate Facebook accounts. Social media has made teaching a tougher job. But I think the line on the Snapchat thing is pretty fucking clear. Why did you? Yeah, I mean, what was on? What did you need to show them that needed to be gone immediately? There's pretty much no reason a 16-year-old girl needs any kind of selfie from a 57-year-old dude. Right. Anything you needed to show them, you could have put on your Instagram. I guarantee God damn to it. It's not like the, it costs money. It's fucking free. It's just a different app. And hey, bonus, you won't send them pics of your boner. And the thing is, if he was sending it to, if he meant to send it to his girlfriend. But he sent it to everybody. Just... Text it to her. She's your girlfriend. Do you not trust her to not put it on YouTube? Like, maybe don't use a third-party service that has already admitted they don't delete shit from their server. Also, dude had 30 people on his Snapchat thing. Is that a lot? I don't use Snapchat because I'm old. Still, 30, 30 people that you're sending stuff that you want to disappear immediately... 
See, that's kind of my problem with Snapchat is there's no such thing as disappear once it's on the cloud no. or the internet or no. what the fuck ever. So that there's a something that's not even real. And they've admitted that shit doesn't get deleted off their server. Nothing's ever gone once you send it out into the internet ether. Like once you put it across a cloud, once you put it on the internet, it's never fucking gone. Monkey shine. So Snapchat is a bullshit business plan. Monkey shine so says. Lies. Monkey shine says, call the girlfriend, invite her over, she can watch you wank in person. Boom, problem solved. She can help. <laughs> she can help. Yes. She can do some of that maybe heavy lifting. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing these kind of things, but. You need to understand the difference. Why the fuck is there a send all button in Snapchat? Who the hell put that in there? That was not a helpful feature. I'm sure there's a use for it. I don't even know what cool gum is in style, though. So. <laughs> When we were kids, we didn't have I gum. A fucking Mary Lou Retton reference. Someone in the channel didn't get it. We they were, were like, what was she playing when she broke her arm? And I'm like, god damn it. We were kids, we didn't have gum. We chewed silly putty. No. We liked it. Couldn't make any bubbles. Suck. Ugh. I, you know, I can't blow bubble gum bubbles. You can't? No. I can... I can chew with my tongue because I had braces for three years and your teeth hurt so much, you learn to chew almost anything with your tongue. It's probably too much information. But I can't blow bubbles with bubble gum. You're like Kermit the Frog. What? He didn't have teeth either. I have teeth. Well, I know, but he has to chew with his tongue. But you just, when you have braces for three years and they're getting tightened on a weekly basis, you learn how to not use them because it's really painful. I guess the first thing we learned this week is there are aspects of our lives that do need to be segmented. Yeah. One of them being the underage women and boys, too. Yeah. Yeah. Away from your dick. We learned this week that it's not worth $3,000 to pay for an iPhone that smells like crotch. No, it's not worth three thousand dollars for an iPhone that doesn't smell. But one that does, it's not a bonus there. One that does. I mean, I like my iPhone. I paid a hundred dollars for it. But not, and yours, and you know what? You paid a hundred dollars for it. It didn't smell like balls. No, it smells pretty much like <sighs> plastic. Someone found out how to say. My this iPhone smells like balls in Chinese, and just put it in the channel. They PM'd it to me too, presumably you. I love my audience. My iPhone smells like balls. Um, let's see. We learned that one of the most important pieces of Americana is the Red Solo Cup. Yeah has many versatile uses. It can get you drunk and arrested. We learned there's kids inside the car and then you stay inside the car with them. Yes. Yes. Everyone inside the car. Fuck you, I'm getting in the car. There seems to be much less wind in here. Um It doesn't really work. No. That routine. No, it doesn't. You don't get on a car. Well apparently you do true. Oh, for fuck's sake. And, and of course, my chat learned to say, this iPhone smells like balls. So we really have taught you something today. We today. did. That's not in the Rosetta Stone program. That That is a useful thing to learn when you go to China. It's where is the library? How much for this food? My iPhone smells like balls. <laughs> 